What's up, everybody? You're listening to the one and only T-Mac Inspired Podcast. Listen as she sits down with regular people to discuss the ideas, the ideas, the opportunities, the opportunities, and the wealth building strategies that they're taking advantage of so the rest of us can do the same. Etiquette and social graces are kind of a lost art. We are in a very casual society. And so it's really important for young women particularly to walk into any situation poised, polished, prepared, and ready to go. We want to empower them with the tools that they need in order to be successful in that environment. When you have the grades, when you're able to get to the door, the social graces and soft skills will enable you to walk through the door and stay there. Ms. Naritha, how are you? I am really well. I'm so well. Thank you for asking. How are you doing, Tasha? I'm phenomenal. Phenomenal. First Good. of first of all, I, I just want to break the ice and let you know that your hair is always on point. Okay. Like, I am a I am a retired hairstylist of 23 years. And uh-huh. I have never ever seen you and your hair was not on point. You know what? I appreciate that. Same with you, first of all, because I come from a a family who owned um, a cosmetology school and two beauty salons. So I grew up in the salon. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, uh yeah. (laughs) Very beautiful. Thank you, thank you. This is a new journey here. So, <laughs> so, so is it the the sister locks? Is that new, or is the color new, or what? What are you talking about? New journey. The sister locks are new. Um, so before this, I was super short and platinum blonde, and throughout the pandemic, uh, I've always wanted sister locks, and I was like, this is the time. What what better time to go through the phases than now? So um, I started growing it out, and uh, and and so we're here. <laughs> So that's what two years. Mm-hmm. Wow! And did it catch really fast? It did. It did. I um I actually just about um, about thirty days ago hit um my one year anniversary for the actual locks, and okay. so I just got permission to get color. So I'm pretty excited. Cool. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yes. And this is not a superficial conversation because there's a lot of sisters out here. With Come sisters. on. It's real. There's, there's communities. Yes, <laughs> and that part, and those that want to come and join the community, and I say, come on in. The water's fine, and there's there's some flexibility here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because you keep your style really nicely. I love it. I love. Thank it. you. Thank you. Thank so tell you. the people, tell the people about Naritha. What do you do? I help entrepreneurs and professionals to level up by uh, modern etiquette. So being authentic in your space, owning your space, owning that seat at the table, but not only just owning the seat at the table, but own the table or the room or the block, whatever it is that you want, (laughs) you can have it by being polished, right? Okay, help me out because, okay, I know what etiquette is, right? Right, right. I skipped that class, okay? Okay. (laughs) <laughs> number one <laughs> number two I like I like what you just said about being polished mm-hmm. what does that look like as an entrepreneur in this this whole entrepreneurial space being polished mm-hmm. what does that look like yeah so Albert Einstein says you have to learn the rules of the game and play better than anyone else and so when we mm-hmm. are in these rooms um, whether we like it or not there are rules of the game. They say, when in Rome, do as the Romans. So while everybody has their own thing, right? And we bring our authentic selves to the world. And I strongly encourage that um, when you walk into a space, having Mm -hmm. the confidence Mm -hmm. to to know what is kind of the, the protocol, the culture of the space, it matters. And when you don't, One, it affects your confidence, but two, it's a distraction from who you are and what you bring to the space. So that's, that's really what it's about knowing, knowing what to do and how to be in a space, but how to be yourself as well. Mm. Okay. So it's kind of like two parts, right? Mm -hmm. So let me see if I can understand this. So if I'm your client, you take me on as a client. Mm -hmm. 
I'm coming to you and you're going to show me how to um, not only, I'm going to say command yes. this, 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 my presence or whatever, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But to do it in a way that it still reflects who I really am on the inside. Absolutely. So you, is that what it, is that what you mean when you say polished? Mm -hmm. that's, so that's you're not going to break me all the way down. No, absolutely not. That's not that's not what we are here to do. No, no, no. This is not respectability politics. That's none of that, right? We we are still ourselves. And so I am just in, in this particular case here, I'm not sure, you know, your grandma's etiquette lady. I'm not the standard etiquette lady, right? Right. So um, I do things my way, but at the same time, um, when in certain spaces, I know how to adapt and navigate the space. Say for instance. We go to, you know, a, a, a business lunch. Okay. There are certain unspoken rules in business. Like that, what? Like, say, for instance, seasoning your food before you taste it. Something like that. I have had hiring managers and CEOs and entrepreneurs look me in the eye and say, Naritha, I will not hire or do business with someone who seasons their food before they taste. Why? Tell me, tell me why. Because it says that you are rigid in thought, that you take action before you get the facts, and it's an insult to the chef. So a mm. little salt and pepper. You know those eggs are going to be bland at that breakfast. We already know that. However, it's just a matter of knowing the rules of the game. So it's tasting them before you add the seasoning. That makes all the difference. So it's those, it's the small things, it's the little things that make a big difference. And uh, yeah. So I noticed um, that you've, got, you've gotten all kind of awards and recognition, especially where you're from, um, based on your business, your business model. Congratulations, by the way. Um, what I want to know is, because, you know, we're in the same inner circle, right? Yes, we are. How do high level entrepreneurs look at each other in this space explain that question a little bit more okay How, uh -huh. okay. so like you said um you had ceos say i would never hire someone who um seasoned their food before they tasted it mm -hmm. you know you gave the reasons why right so when you have, let's say you have 50 high level entrepreneurs in the same mm -hmm. space, mm -hmm. I wanted to know, like through your eyes, because you're an etiquette yeah. person, right? Yeah. How, how is this room sized up? Mm. You get what I'm saying? I, I do. Yeah, I do. Um, one thing I love about this room is that it's a safe space for us. Mm. And so in that space, we're not judging, right? We are all there to be, um, to be better. And mm -hmm. that's amazing. Um, I also see an opportunity uh, because there is a level of financial success that mm -hmm. is in that room. The conversations are different in that room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen, the conversations are different. So um, with that said, when the, the income increases, in many cases, our lifestyle increases and our opportunities increase, our circles. Uh, we, you know, we, we add people to our circles. We are in different meetings and so forth, whether it is um, to, for a partnership or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so with that said, we definitely need to know what to do in these new spaces. So. Mm -hmm. Going to when we all go to Eddie V's, it's us, right? So, right. okay. However, when you go to Eddie V's with that investor, they are going to be looking at your mannerisms and the way that you operate at that table to get clues about who you are and your level of polish and where they can take you. Because even if that person is, is cool with you, right? they still have additional rooms that they want to bring you in. But if 
you are not ready to go to the country club and you're going to embarrass them at the club or you're going to embarrass the person who brought them who you know who yeah. they introduce you to they might think twice about that additional opportunity so mm-hmm. we write our own tickets we are doing our own thing and it's amazing however we we're we're on jets now we are at the yacht club now we mm-hmm. are you know might want to join the country club now all of those things have a different culture and different ways to operate and navigate. And so when we know those things, we're able to navigate and we, we are not leaving the bag on the table. Because I mean, mm-hmm. the question is like, how many, how many times have we lost an opportunity and didn't know it, offended somebody and didn't know it? And like literally, you know, drop the bag just because there were things that we don't know that are, you know, that, that are, are part of the, the, the business society or the socialite society, all the different things. And we just, we just need to know. So my, my passion, my goal is to make sure that I decode that for us so that we are ready for any opportunity that presents itself. Wow. For sure. For sure. You know what? I didn't, I guess because I've been in business for so long, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize the importance of um, mannerisms. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to put it out there. Um, It's a subcultural thing, right? Right. Um, But when you're, when, when, God starts to enlarge your territory Amen. Per, se. <laughs> uh-huh. per se. Some things that, that I did was acceptable. Uh-huh. And I and, and I'm gonna be honest and very transparent. It didn't carry over well in a different setting. Uh-huh. You get what I mean? Uh-huh. So and it wasn't that they're better than me, because they're not. No, nope. but it's that they they were taught better and a lot of us entrepreneurs i'm just going to say it that way Uh we weren't taught we don't know what we don't know until we lose the bag a word (laughs) word. until we lose the bag Uh right Uh and 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 people don't have to invest in you or your business if they don't want to no. And they're finding reasons not to more than they're finding reasons to invest Absolutely. in you and your business. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm like, when I found out what you did, I was like, oh yeah, like I need, I need to have a conversation with her. Like really? I mean, I, and, I, and I need to go on record and ask you, look in front of everybody yeah. um, to come and speak to my group. I'm having a retreat, um, the Nurse REI Club. That's where mm-hmm. I teach nurses how to invest in real estate. It's one of my... Yeah passion projects so we're having a retreat in um la oh my god no sacramento sacramento so i want you to come if you can we'll talk offline but yeah we need this we need this we need this so tell tell me about the the naritha before the etiquette Uh, tell me about her you have siblings i have siblings i am the the oldest the eldest four um Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I, I, I am, I'm the one <laughs> that the, the kind of the, the mama bear, the one that it went out into the new frontier. Um, and, uh, my, my journey actually started, uh, up for, for my business actually now it started kind of in high school. Um, my sister and I went to, uh, uh, public high schools and my brothers, my younger brothers, you know how it goes in the family, the younger brothers, um, ended up uh, at elite private schools. And mm-hmm. so there was a there, there was a difference in the level of, of exposure and opportunity uh, between our experiences. Completely different circles. I mentioned before that I come from an entrepreneurial family. Um, and so I spent my days, nights, summers, at the salon and at the the beauty school. And I went through, you know, cosmetology classes and the whole thing. And I was making sure that the chrome on the bottom of the um, chairs was 
was shining. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Exactly. <laughs> and um, my brothers, their experiences were more um, at, at the country club, at their friend's birthday party, or going um, skiing with the one of the prominent families in, you know, in our community, going, going skiing with them for spring break. So it was just different. And I was like, hey, wait a minute, hold on. There's, there's another, there's a whole nother world here. <laughs> and I want to know more about it. And so um, I decided then that, okay, there's more and I want to know more about it. And it does more and different and even um elevated resources doesn't necessarily mean better and I want to make sure that that is also clear who you are who we are it's enough it is enough and so um we don't have to necessarily be better to be you know their 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 stuff isn't better okay for sure for um, sure but um, I did, I did want to experience more. And so I also, uh, my, while I was doing what I was doing, my friends were in um, a gifted program and during the, for, for uh, minority students. And so on the weekends, they would be learning about what to wear during an interview, what to say, all the things. So I wanted to be in that program, but I was not because I didn't have great grades. You know, that, that wasn't my, my ministry, but um, but, um, but I'm sure. so I, uh, would always listen to what they would say, you know, and I took that on and then I ended up interviewing very, very well. Right. And I would get whatever it is that I was going for. And, and then I would think about our other peers that were in the same school that didn't have the program. And they didn't have the entrepreneurial thing that I was learning and they didn't have um, the country clubs and all the other things either. So what are they doing when it's time for them to go for that interview? So kept that in the back of my mind, kept moving forward. Became the first black female salesperson at um, a conglomerate, an auto conglomerate here, luxury auto. Um, and I needed to have a certain skill set to be successful in that environment. And I learned yeah. and extremely successful um, but there were also those moments where um customer would come in and say you know would assume that i was uh not in sales that i was in a support position um and would speak to me as such or um they would uh say I, some one man said i don't want to work with her like, I'm not going to work with her. Like, she's she's a child. Because I've always kind of looked a little bit younger than my age. Mm -hmm. And so um, they, I, I was, it was my turn. I was up. And so they were like, well, um, either you work with her or you're invited to leave. And so they ended up working with me. And, of course, they ended up hugging me on the way out the door after buying that car. Because that's, mm -hmm. that's how that goes, right? But I learned so much along the way. And then um, I have a, a, a little background in writing as well. So uh, the combination of writing and uh, my cosmetology um, experience came together with my last job, which was, um, I was the director of diversity outreach for a Korean trade magazine within the ethnic beauty industry. And mm. so I was the writer speaking to Korean beauty supply owners all over the world um, about the Black experience, how to bridge that gap, because there is a little bit, there's a, a big, um, there's a big disconnect there, to, to put that lightly, right? Um, and then I also would let them know, hey, it, it's, it's also time to invest in our communities that you were in. Um, but I would have my coworkers, I was the only person um, that was born in America at in, in the office. Everybody else was Korean. And hmm. they would come to my office on a very regular basis and say, Naritha, why are your people not own beauty supply? Why do you let us do that? Why do you not get together and own beauty supply? Why do your people X, Y, Z constantly? Why why do you have 
big cell phone, but can't pay bills. And these were like real, um, genuine questions. And so I was like, okay, it is now time for me to make sure that my people and it, you know, it's, it's all people, but my people are equipped with what we need in order to be in these rooms mm. and make a difference for ourselves, for our community. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of the evolution of, of, uh, of ever appropriate. And along the, along the way, I um, have a wonderful son who is now 23 years old, but uh, you know, then I was, I was uh, my second year in college and I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I have had um, a lot of challenges along the way that the whole adage, you know, you don't look like what you've been through. Huh. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you. Okay. So that's another reason why I do what I do because I know, sure. I, I know struggle. However, I heard something today um, and I, I took a note and it said, the struggle is not real. It is only imagined. And it's mm -hmm. like, Hmm. Now when you're in it, it's real. <laughs> it feels really, really real. But right. at, at the end of the day, um, what is it that we are, what are we seeing? How do we see ourselves? How do we see the struggle? Is the struggle a stepping stone for what's next in a positive way? Or um, is, is, are we preparing for more struggle? Because we get <laughs> We attract what we're prepared for. And so- Come on, what? repeat that. We attract what we are prepared for. That's why I do what I do. I prepare us to stay ready. Mm. Not long ago, about what, a month and a half ago now, two months, I was um, you know, minding my business and a friend uh, sent me a message just like, hey, do you want to join me um, as my plus one at this, this gala? Well, this gala happened to be, um, and it was like about a week, a week um, in between the week notice. Mm -hmm. And it was a black tie gala in LA. Turns out it was um, a major A-list gala and mm -hmm. it was sponsored by Gucci and the whole thing. So the reason that I was able to say yes even though I was traveling that week, it's because I was prepared. I expect these things to happen in my life. So mm -hmm. I end up, I go to my closet because during the pandemic, I was buying evening gowns. So I had something to wear to the Gucci Gala. Hmm. Stay ready, right? Um, Interesting. Because during the pandemic, uh -huh. most people, uh -huh. Where were out here birthing businesses because, yes. and while they were, you know, at ground level, you know, trying to build a business during the pandemic because, mm -hmm. hey, it was yes. a pandemic. Yes, that part. We were buying evening gowns. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Why were you buying evening gowns? Because I expect to be invited and to host events where I, an evening gown is required. And so I don't have time to be running to the store and trying to find the shoes and do all the things because I'm busy. I was also birthing businesses through the pandemic. I was also buying the other stuff <laughs> through the pandemic too, but having a few, having a few yeah. evening gowns, sequins ready to go, fit well, that was important. That was important also. So it's, it's a, it's a both. And you don't have to only be bougie and no, no, no. you don't have, it just, it's not necessarily only about that. It's just about being ready for any, any opportunity at any stage of, mm -hmm. or any, you know, section of your life. Cause you know, I have multiple, I'm, you know, I'm from the loop and I'm proud. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so there's, for that. Sure. <laughs> there's that. And this then, is like, this conversation is so like, I don't know, it's I'm very intrigued, you know, <laughs> because there's, there's people, mm -hmm. there are people, you know, I speak to the entrepreneurs yep. that are struggling because they're not ready. Yeah. They're not prepared. Mm -hmm. 
And when you, when more seasoned entrepreneurs attempt to help them prepare themselves for things, Uh we're not accepted. Yeah. I'm going to say it that way. Yes. Why is that? Why do you think that is? In in many cases, it is, um, it, it is mindset. It is the insecurities that are actually speaking more than it might, it might be loud and I don't need that and whatever, whatever. But at the end of the day is, am I ready? Can I do it? And so we have to know that we are worthy and that it is coming and that, and recognize opportunities. I've blown it more times than a few. That's why I'm able to say, do what, you know, do what I do today. Um, so yeah, it is a matter of really understanding that it's, it's not, it's not selling out. It's not, you know, being bougie. And one of my little, you know, trade line trademarks is, you know, I'm not bougie. I'm worthy. This is not, this is not extra. This is, this is also a part of who I am and what I do. And, and the same, same for you, who you are and what you do. And so it's just a matter of being prepared. It's just a matter of being ready, um, not only for us, but mm-hmm. also to, um, to, to be able to add value to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Because we need, to, we need to bring somebody with us. So the sooner mm-hmm. we get ourselves together, one, that's the longer we are able to, to experience and enjoy, right? <laughs> the <Yeah>. promised land. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and then also that gives us the opportunity to bring someone with us. But really, really quick, that that dinner was also uh, Jeff Bezos was at that dinner. Still, Steven Spielberg was at that dinner. It was, you know, the whole whole situation with your name card and the whole thing. Right. So you need to be able to know dining etiquette. You can't have your napkin on the floor and, you know. So that, that's, that's another thing. So you never know when that, just a lunch invitation, what, what that could mean for your life. Right, right. Wow, that's powerful. I think, I think it's super powerful because most people, number one, would not be buying evening gowns during a pandemic. <laughs> but, you know, it speaks, to, it speaks to who you are as a person and it speaks to your mindset. Like 100%. Like, I need, I know that I'm, I expect to be in a room with Steven Spielberg. I expect to be in a room with Jeff Bezos. Like, these are some of the things that you, you, nobody could have just taught you this. You had to know who you were authentically Mm. to be with, to Mm. to know that you were even worthy. Mm. And that's what I'm hearing. And I'm hearing this is what you share with other people. This is how you help other people. Yes. It's more than just, here's a module, here's a course, you know, it's no, it's a let's, let's get you to where you want to be in a way that serves you and others best. That's it. That's what I'm feeling from you. I'm just that's saying. It. That, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> you, you got it. That is it. Yes. I Absolutely. love it. I love it. So what are you doing these days? Oh, all the things, all the things. Um, I just finished a dining etiquette online course. Um, And so that is a a quick way to learn all the the rules of the game in that way. So I'm doing that. Um, I have multiple other businesses as well. Um, everybody in, in, in the rooms that we're in with, you know, the Myron Golden, we have to say his name because he's amazing. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so I, I, I also, um, have, you know, and, and I'm in real estate a, a bit, yeah. I dabble, right. That was also a part of my life. I didn't even talk about that, but that was a whole thing. Um, but I still, I have an Airbnb in Atlanta and I have some investments here in St. Louis and, and, um, Yes, but in, in regard to in regard to etiquette, um, I have a challenge that is coming up soon, and I'll make sure that you have that information. Super oh. excited about that, and that will be um, you know a masterclass that really goes 
in depth into um, the mindset and the things that we um, want to know in order to be ready. And as you mentioned, you know what, the forks and the what to wear and all that stuff, that is, that's, that's extra. What I'm really interested in is making sure that our mindset is ready and that we are confident and we feel worthy first. Mm -hmm. And then we figure out which fork to use because you can still fumble around if you aren't comf confident with which, you know, with, with the right fork, right? So, uh, so yes, that's, that's what we're doing. We are, um, we are empowering entrepreneurs and professionals, you know, one at a time, one to many um, to, oh, yeah. to live out loud with joy. I love it. Oh my God, I can't wait. I can't wait. When is your um, challenge coming? April 18th is okay. uh, the date for the challenge. Um, and then I also have a master class that is coming um, actually at the end of this month. And so I'll have, I'll have all the information for you there. But um, for more information about the online course, um, you can actually go to whereismyfork.com and uh, get get the uh, course and, and that's actually in its uh, pre-launch phase. So it's a Ooh. really good time. It's a really good time to do that. <laughs> Where is my fork.com? Yes. Awesome. It's gonna, I'm gonna put all the links below, but yeah. I just want to say, number one, thank you again for coming oh and having a conversation with me. And then I want to ask you mm -hmm. to speak to the female entrepreneur who is struggling yeah, and just don't know which way to go mm -hmm. um, as far as support and she's lost her way. Mm -hmm. Can you give her some advice? Yes. Um, I, I have been you. I am you. <laughs> um, every journey has, you know, a new level of of learning. And so, um, again, I say you are worthy. Um, and one of the things that changed my life when I was going through it, I had nothing. I felt like I had no one, but that actually was not true. Um, because we, in many cases, there is support around us that we don't see with our um, with our suffering blinders on. Um, and so definitely look around. You are tuned in to one right here. Tasha McRae is, is a beast and she will get, she will get your, um, your, your life and your mindset together. Um, and so definitely tap into Tasha and tap into, um, the, the people that, that she is around, but the, the fact of the matter is trouble don't last always. And when you decide when you decide that your life is going to be different, that mm -hmm. you deserve better and you command and demand that of your life it's a law it's a law of the universe that it's got to turn around but you got to do the work and a lot of that work is here and here first so um so yeah just just stay the course and know that there's more and, 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 and uh, your, your later will be greater. One of my favorite sayings, it gets greater later. <laughs> Listen, don't it? Thank Doesn't you it so go? much. It does. How can people contact you other than where's my fork.com? Sure. Um, I am on Instagram at ever appropriate. And uh, my uh, website is ever-appropriate.com. And um, I'll, I'll provide my email address as well because I, I truly and genuinely want to hear from you. I want to connect um, because I, I, this, is why, this is why I do what I do, period. I can tell. I so feel your spirit. <laughs> I love it. I love it. 
Thank you again. Thank you so much. Yes. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, hey. Don't forget to follow me if you're not on all platforms at TMAC underscore inspire. All right. See you on the next episode. Bye.